We're given a function on an interval, and what we want to do is investigate the Riemann sums for this function. The first thing we need to do is sketch a graph. So we should first recall what a cosine graph looks like, and notice that this x minus pi over 4 tells us that we're going to take this basic cosine graph and shift it to the right by pi over 4 units. Now of course you can use technology to help you out with this, but I'm going to try to get this down by hand. The interval that we're interested in starts at pi over 8, and we're shifting to the right by pi over 4 units, so I'll put both of those tick marks in there. And then I guess I'll work my way up to 5 pi over 8, the right hand side of this interval. Now with the basic cosine graph, we start at the maximum value at x equals 0. If we're shifting this cosine graph to the right by pi over 4 units, we're going to start at a maximum value of this cosine graph at pi over 4, and it would take a distance of pi over 2 for this graph to touch the x-axis. That would actually occur over here at 3 pi over 4. So our given graph is going to look something like this, and we're only interested in this graph on the interval from pi over 8 to 5 pi over 8, so I'll get rid of this piece. So that's our sketch, and we're going to use this again in a second, but let's first go to part b and calculate delta x. Well, the formula for delta x is often given like this, where b in our example is 5 pi over 8, a in our example is pi over 8, and n equals 4. That gives us 4 pi over 8 divided by 4, or pi over 2 divided by 4. Either way we look at it, we're going to get a delta x of pi over 8. And what that means is that the width of each one of our rectangles in this Riemann sum is going to be pi over 8. And that's actually really convenient for us, because if you look at the sketch that we made of this graph, we've already divided this thing up into four equal increments, each with length pi over 8. All right, so we're all set up to illustrate what a left Riemann sum would look like. So for a left Riemann sum, we take the leftmost endpoint for each of these four intervals, and that leftmost endpoint is going to give us the height of the rectangle within our Riemann sum. So our left Riemann sum is going to look something like this. And so things don't get too messy. I'm going to make a little bit of room here and I'll show you what a right Riemann sum is going to look like as well. Okay, so I just copied the same graph down. For our right Riemann sum, we take the rightmost point in each of these four subintervals, and that right point now gives us the height of the rectangle in our Riemann sum. And for this particular example, it looks like the area of all of these rectangles combined for our left Riemann sum is going to be an overestimate of the actual area under the curve between pi over 8 and 5 pi over 8. And looking down here at this right Riemann sum, it looks like the area of these four rectangles is going to be an underestimate of the actual area under the curve. As far as actually calculating these Riemann sums, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little bit of space over here. And we just need to add up the area of each one of these rectangles. So length times width for each one. For our first rectangle, our width is going to be pi over 8. And the height of this rectangle is going to be this y value right here, which is determined by the given function at the x value pi over 8. That means the height of this first rectangle is cosine of pi over 8 minus pi over 4. That is just the value of the given function at the x value pi over 8. As far as our next rectangle goes, our width is pi over 8 again. Again, but the height of this rectangle this time is given by the value of the function at x equals pi over 4. Moving on to the next rectangle, we have a width of pi over 8 again, and the height of this rectangle is the y value of the given function at the x value 3 pi over 8. And for our last rectangle, again pi over 8 is our width, and the height of that rectangle is given by this y value here, which is the value of the function evaluated at pi over 2. Now you can see that each one of these terms has a pi over 8 on it, so we could have factored that pi over 8 out from the very beginning. And we can simplify each one of these cosine values. When I plug all of this into my calculator, I'm getting an answer of approximately 1.395993. That would be rounded to six decimal places. Let's do the same calculation with our right Riemann sum. This time, knowing that the width of each of these rectangles is pi over 8, I'm just going to pull the pi over 8 out in front. And then we can just add up all of the heights of each of these rectangles. The height of the first rectangle is given by the value of the function at x equals pi over 4. Adding up the heights of each of those rectangles gives us this, which can be simplified. And plugging all of those numbers into my calculator gives me approximately this number, and that is rounded to six decimal places as well. So I think that you can see that these answers kind of make sense. We expected this value up here to be an overestimate of the area. We expected this value down here to be an underestimate of the area. So the actual area under this curve between pi over 8 and 5 pi over 8 is somewhere in between these two values. But I think that we've answered all of the questions for this problem, so I'm going to zoom out on this thing. And I hope that that helps you out with Riemann sums, and I will see you in the next calculus problem of the day.